Hi and welcome to Inside This Music Box. I'm Erin and I'm a primary and high school music teacher in Sydney, Australia. This video today is directly targeted towards students studying the HSC in Australia who are doing either Music 1 or Music 2. There's often a lot of confusion around composition portfolios for HSC. Often students will get the wrong idea of what the portfolio was all about and what's required of them and then they miss out on marks that could have gone towards their internal mark for their HSC. So first off, what is a composition portfolio? In broad terms, a composition portfolio or composition diary is a place where you document everything about your composition process. This is the written proof that you did not plagiarize your composition and it actually can be very helpful in the composition process if you have the right mindset around it. To be more specific it is like a journal of what you did, why you did it, when you did it and how you did it. It has a record of compositional ideas used and also not used with explanation about why you did these things. It might include brainstorms, things you've listened to. It has a record of any musical problems you came across and how you resolve them. For example, if you didn't know how to get from this section into this section, and a bit of a discussion about how you figured out the way to get there. It includes reflections on your own work and the works of others that you might have listened to for inspiration. It's really important to be able to critique your own work and you can gain a lot by thinking really critically about what you've written and if it works, if it doesn't work and how you can resolve that. It really should include analysis of other music, whether that be a concept analysis, a transcription, a score analysis, and then further reflection on what you've learned from that and how it might inform what you do in your composition. It might even be things that you didn't like about the piece you listened to and something you wanna make sure doesn't occur in your piece. For example, maybe you listen to a piece that sounds like it has too many ideas or it sounds a bit disjointed. You can jot that down and be like, I wanna make sure I don't include too many ideas and I take the time to develop them rather than throwing in lots of new ideas. It also might contain discussions of the influences on your music, whether it be an experience you had or a piece you listened to or an idea you came up with or a story that you might be trying to follow the storyline throughout your composition. These are really good things to discuss and reflect upon that might give you more direction when you're writing your composition. The next aspect is when do I work on it? And the answer is every single time you work on anything to do with your composition or you have an idea about it. I'd say a majority of students do not do this and then are kicking themselves when it comes to the day it's due and they're trying to reflect on things that happened weeks, maybe even months ago, and don't have evidence to prove this, and in turn it ends up being very brief, very rushed, and doesn't get them good marks. So make the right choice, work on it every time you work on your composition so you don't completely regret it when it comes to the due date. In terms of what the composition portfolio actually looks like, it has lots of written materials, so that's your reflections, discussion of what you did, any notes you jot down about things that inspire you. It definitely includes screenshots or printouts of your composition, even if it's just a small section, a little line here and there in which you then go talk about. Don't just pop in a picture of your score with absolutely no discussion of what the marker is looking for or the purpose of why you included this screenshot. If you're using a program like Sibelius, you can go to the review section up the top and go to comment and you can actually type little sticky note style things onto your score and then you can just include a screenshot of that. That's a really easy and clear way to show the market exactly what you're talking about and where on your score. If you're using a digital portfolio, you can include audio recordings of different ideas. For example, if you improvise for 10 minutes trying to come up with new ideas, record it, and then maybe go chop out the excerpts of ideas that you really liked. It might include reviews or reflections about concerts or gigs that you've attended and how that might inspire or inform your composition. It might include small compositional exercises you do in class or you do in your own time. It might include any research you've done on the topic you're composing about or the style of music you're composing or how to compose idiomatically for the instruments you're writing for and any other considerations you might be making when composing. It'll include written analysis of other people's music as I mentioned before. This could look like a mind map, this could look like a, a table or dot points or anything. It doesn't have to be written exactly in the way you would do in an exam, but it does need to incorporate words from the syllabus and a demonstration that you understand the concepts of music, you understand how to analyze music, and that you're using the correct terminology. 
Do not use really casual and vague language when discussing your composition. These are words like vibe, where it doesn't really tell the market what you're talking about and you need to make sure you think a bit deeper about what you are trying to say with the word vibe. Anything that's very colloquial and casual and doesn't say specifically what you're talking about in relation to the concepts of music or any musical terminology is not going to help you out marks wise. It can include notes or comments from your teacher or other peers that have given you feedback on your composition and your reflections on it. Do not hesitate to get feedback from your teacher on both your composition and your portfolio. You want to make sure you're on the right track and you don't want to leave it to the last minute to find out you've been doing something wrong. So make sure you talk to them and get some feedback and also document that into your portfolio. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to a great resource made by one of my closest friends that is all about the HSC composition process and ideas about how to approach this big composition. If anyone is interested in seeing a video about the HSC composition process, not the portfolio, the actual composition, let me know in the comments and I'll film that for you as soon as I can. I know it's coming up to term four where the new year 12s will begin their composition. So I'm hoping this is a beneficial video for you and has given you an idea of where to start. If you enjoyed this video or you thought it was helpful, please click the like button down below and click subscribe to see more music education related content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.